the time has come to install the exhaust system on the RED124 project. This catalytic converter does not work. It's the original one from 30 years ago. I'd be very surprised if any of them still work. But as far as I'm aware, we don't have emissions testing here, so I don't care. It's going back on. Uh, I just put it on a sheet of cardboard to prevent it getting all scratched up because I did paint it. Um, and then there was quite the wrestle involved in getting that to bolt up to the manifolds. But I got there in the end. It's just laborious and, yeah, quite a nightmare, but you get there in the end. And pleasingly, um, that front section of the exhaust aligns absolutely perfectly. It actually installs better than my blue-black car, so in many ways, this red 124 is better than my uh, Pride and Joy 124. Once that was installed, obviously, it was time to move on to the middle muffler. Now, the middle and rear mufflers are brand new, and they are original equipment, so they fit like an absolute glove. Naturally, I had lost the bolts for that uh, middle muffler, so another trip to the hardware store was involved um, to pick those up. Um, and you can wrestle that joint closer together. It's just a case of twisting that middle muffler back and forth until it gets into its home position. And that's exactly what I did. And that's how I got it, just by wrestling it into position. And that's also on its brand new hanger at the rear. And as I mentioned, I just had to go driving to get some more bolts for it. Initially, I was undecided as to whether I was going to install the rear muffler because I thought maybe it will get in the way when it comes to tightening up the bolts for that rear subframe. But I thought, what the hell, I want to know how low the car sits, so I went ahead and installed that as well. But not before going to the hardware store and getting some new bolts. I actually chose galvanized bolts. Hopefully they will hold up to the heat, but being galvanized, they most certainly will not rust like the original crap that was there before. Given that the catalytic converter doesn't work, I don't think temperature is going to be an issue anyway. So this is my new rear muffler, of course, with a new buffer installed, new mounting hardware, and I did, of course, fit my uh, transmission cover while I was under there as well. So that is now secured on, uh, but not tightened down yet. So I got the uh, hangers bang in the middle. Um, because you can adjust the rotation and the alignment of that muffler and I got it absolutely in the center and then tightened it up. So I'm very, very pleased with how that exhaust is installed. I could not have done better if I tried. It's actually better than my other car. So now let's get the car down on its wheels so I can measure the undercarriage height because in Western Australia, you must have a minimum of 10 centimetres, otherwise it's an instant fail when it comes to having the car inspected. Now, 10 centimetres is pretty generous. Uh, we do have a lively Japanese car enthusiast scene here in Perth, and they're constantly having issues trying to keep above 10 centimetres. But personally, 10 centimetres is pretty damn low. But good on them for pushing the boundaries anyway. Um, I did push the car backwards and forwards uh, several times uh, to get the uh, suspension to settle because if you don't do this it ends up sitting artificially high 
and of course I pumped that rear suspension up and down a few times as well. And just a crude measurement, I'm showing here that my jack is 15 centimeters at the highest point. So if I can clear any section of that front area, um, which you can see is already higher than 10 centimeters, then I'm as good as gold. And most pleasingly, my jack easily slides under it and only hits at the highest section. So I've absolutely got more than 10 centimeters there. I just have to hope my front seats don't weigh it down too much. And on the day, I'm only going to have a quarter tank of fuel. 